episode two. That it is. Uh, how very exciting. Uh, how do you feel about the launch of episode one? Um, I mean, okay. It was fine. I, editing, editing the episode was actually okay. Um, it wasn't as like painful as I thought it was going to be. I think it was just a bit complicated because we were like splicing two recordings together. Yeah. Right. But the general cutting down of everything, you know, was fine. I think it's just like learning how to do things directly on Anchor. I don't know whether, you know, that editing directly on Anchor is a better idea versus editing like on GarageBand or on Audacity. I don't know. It's just that Anchor is convenient because I can do it while I am at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. I tried editing on uh, on Anchor and clearly it didn't really work out. I got lost. I've never done any sort of audio editing before. So I think it's quite uh, cool that you actually know how to do it. I mean, to say whether I know how to do it is another thing. I think I just... Uh, zoomed in and like pressed random things <laughs> <laughs> but clearly I didn't because I was so afraid of losing things you know like what if I click something and then something just disappeared yeah okay, and I can't get it back that is true like um, I realized that we actually have to keep every single audio file in the anchor library lest it is gone from the digital ether because that is our audio storage space so I'm like oops okay we need, well, I say we, it's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to need to basically clean up the audio files that are currently there, like delete the ones that are not in our previous episode before I think I go crazy. Yeah, great plan. Also, okay. like, Anchor is just a bit weird because like you saw, like I showed you, the, mm. the stuff that's available on the app versus what's available on desktop is different. And yeah, I have no idea why. <laughs> like, is. Anchor, what are you doing? <laughs> also, like, Anchor, if you're listening, I would like a way to organize all of our audio files in folders. Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, at least let us organize everything by episodes or something. Yeah. So I don't know how people who have, you know, a ton of episodes, how they have organized all their shit because they must be more organized than I currently am. I'm very sure. We'll figure something out. I, I feel like it, it could be a system. But yeah, I mean, on that note on podcast, uh, very exciting that it's already up. And uh, I listened to it and I felt, oh, wow, it's real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> and it's now even more real because you bought a mic. That I did. I did. I bought a mic because my sister said the... My audio in the first episode was very soft compared to your voice. Mm -hmm. So, And I thought, well, okay, I guess uh, I may have to have a mic. I don't know. <laughs> may, if, if my audio sounds uh, soft in the next uh, episode, then in I think episode. it's... <laughs> in this episode, actually, yeah. Then it's a me problem, not a computer problem. I don't know if it's a you problem or if it's just a me problem being used to being very loud. <laughs> well, we, we don't know. So we'll, we're going to have to adjust this at some point, but uh, it's okay. It could be both. It could be, but it, it's okay. I think it's fine. It could be both, but now we match because we have the same mic. That we do. Just completely coincidentally. <laughs> very exciting. I feel really... It feels so... <sighs> professional i guess you feel, in some you feel more professional now a little but uh, i also use the mic for meetings <laughs> yeah yeah basically yes i yeah i obviously used to use the mic for my classes and stuff as well mm. and just pretended to already have a podcast while conducting those <laughs> things <laughs> yeah, you know sometimes you want to speak into the mic and you be all like on this on today's uh episode of who is doing what at 10 a.m. at workplace A. <laughs> yes, basically yes. Sometimes you just want to pretend that you are fancier than you actually are when you are at your day job. <laughs> uh, I think like we haven't actually recorded 
since a month ago. I think we're trying to do it. Yeah, actually, yes. I think I think the yeah. last I think we recorded the second round of the first episode. Like, a, yeah, just about a month ago, maybe somewhere there. Close. Yeah. Okay. And in today's episode, um, we'll be talking about podcasts. Yes. So I guess it's like the what whatever we were talking about at first was kind of this, uh, very vague segue into what we <laughs> like about podcasts. Yes. And, this is the podcast uh, episode about podcasts. <laughs> Why? Just because. And well, I mean, I guess we can just start off with you know. When, when was the first time you started listening to podcasts? Honestly, I actually have no idea. Like, I, I was thinking about this question, like, in preparation to talk about it. And I really don't know. Because mm. if, okay, if we rewind a bit to uh, what we talked about in the previous podcast about our initial Lizzie Bennett podcast idea, I'm not even sure if I was actually listening to any podcasts at the time when we had that idea, which makes me now wonder why in the hell did I have the idea of making a podcast related to that? Because, mm. like, I mean, I, I guess I just like listening to things. I always need something on in the background. Yeah. So, but I guess the first podcast that I remember listening to is probably Hello Internet. <laughs> Um, okay. Hello Internet or Welcome to Night Vale, which I realize are two like wildly different things. Oh. Have, have you heard of either of those things? Well, no, actually, I've not. <laughs> okay, so this was I this is probably sometime around like 2014 or 2015, because I I just distinctly remember listening to things when I was in the London flat when I was doing my masters. Mm-hmm. So, Hello Internet is a, well, I say is, I don't know whether to say is or was because it's been on an extended hiatus since just about the beginning of the pandemic. Like, it just suddenly stopped producing episodes with no warning and kind of left us all in the lurch. And if I'm sounding bitter about it, I kind of am. (laughs) I'm like, thanks. Thanks. Um, but it was essentially a two dudes talking podcast, which is pretty much what we are doing, but we are not two dudes, by the YouTubers CGP Grey and Brady Heron. So okay. I don't know if you know either of those people. I actually don't. I more or less live under a rock. <laughs> um, okay, so I mean, I don't know. I mean, you may have seen some something from Grey just, you know, around in the internet. Like, have you ever come across this YouTube video, uh, it's, I mean, it's pretty old, that it was the uh, United Kingdom Explained. No, actually, oh, no. Okay. That's I like... think, like, as we're going on about this, I think mm. we have very, <laughs> it's like we have a Venn diagram of two separate circles. That's true. In terms of podcasts. That we that, yeah, okay, yeah, that is very true. That is very true. But yeah, so that there's that one. I just like listening to that one because... I don't know, it's, they just talk about random shit and it's entertaining and it's funny <laughs> because Grey is a very specific kind of person and him reacting to Brady and Brady reacting to him is very entertaining or at least I find it very entertaining. Um, so there's that. And Welcome to Night Vale is actually a fiction podcast. So that one is serialized. I don't know if that's the right word to use. That one started, I didn't start listening to that when when it started. I I got into Welcome to Night Vale because at some point, like it was kind of blowing up on Tumblr, just very yeah. randomly. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You re- do you remember that? I happening? remember it. And I remember people talking about it. And there was mm. such a hype. I tried listening to one episode actually, but yeah. I never got into it. Mm. Yeah, I so so I, I got into it, I think, because of that Tumblr hype, but I think not at the exact time when it was Tumblr hype. I probably, like, subscribed to it and then just left it there and just <laughs> waited and then, like, binged a whole bunch because that one um, comes out... No, that one only comes out... That one comes out every... Well, twice a month on the 1st and the 15th and it's, like, half an hour episodes. So... Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised. So you say you, you couldn't get into it. And I, I honestly have no idea how I ended up actually getting sucked in. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, you know, kind of creepy, kind of horror. Mm-hmm. And that is very much not what I like to consume. But it somehow just like sucked me in. Into the have random weird town. <laughs> it could be that whole the tonality of how it's delivered because when I listened to it, it sounded very uh, calming, the kind of thing that you could have at the background. Yes. So it for the people who don't know. Me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's presented as a radio show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that I think it, it gave off that very like late night radio show kind of mm-hmm. vibe, which I feel like it could be because why uh, you're, you got sucked into it more so than you would say um an actual horror podcast Mm -hmm. yeah actually the creators of that podcast currently do have a horror podcast uh, where they talk where they talk about horror movies like they watch a horror movie and they then they like talk through it because uh the guy who narrates welcome to night vale really likes horror movies and one of the writers of Night Vale does not so they're like <laughs> on this journey together and I do not think I'm going to start listening to that I highly doubt I'm gonna start listening to that um, yeah because just no but I don't know I like it because and and what you said is true um like Cecil um oh my gosh I actually suddenly forgot oh Cecil Baldwin I'm like because the character's name and his name is the same name so I had to remember what's his what his actual surname is like Cecil Baldwin's voice is so calming. It is ridiculous. I wow. Well, I think back in that time right, when I was starting, just starting to listen to podcasts, I think I listened to them a lot earlier than you. Because mm-hmm. at one point I was really into uh listening to podcast episodes of animators. Mm-hmm. So I think my first podcast was probably an episode of uh, this comic artist, Laura Innes, uh, author of The Dreamer, back then. Oh, okay. Yeah. I remember this comic. I think you sent it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, sent, I sent the link to you before. And then the thing is, it's sadly still on hiatus now. I don't think it's ever going to continue. It's basically, American history, uh, modern day teenage girl finds herself in 1776. <laughs> you know, there's this in her dreams, right? And, mm. and there's this whole drama of uh, her being a part of the American Revolutionary War and whatnot. So that's when I started listening to podcast episodes. And I kind of went in. And then after that, I delved <laughs> into and in this this uh, old podcast. I don't actually know if it's still ongoing now, but it's it used to be called The Animation Podcast. Mm-hmm. And you, I would be listening to these interviews uh, with uh, Disney animators like Glenn Keane. I'm pretty sure Mark, Mark something. I can't remember his name anymore. <laughs> but basically, like a lot of people from Disney, and it was very interesting to just hear their thought process. And I think for a period of time, I stopped. Mm-hmm. Um, and I recently got back into listening to podcasts again because I just want something to listen to while I'm working. Right? Yeah. It's it's yeah. the I think that is one of the very big appeals is is the having something on in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because and... I know like some people think like oh how can you concentrate when you have the thing in the background, but like I need the thing in the background because silence is creepy. It's quite strange. I I like listening to podcasts when I'm doing things that I don't need to think. But the minute when I'm working on something where I actually have to focus, I need to think, I, I really need, need it to be quiet. Mm-hmm. But I know that there are some people who actually prefer some white noise or music while they're yes. working. Which that is person is me. <laughs> That's not me. I don't get it. So... <laughs> That person is very much me. Silence creeps me the heck out. <laughs> but okay, I, I think we'll, we'll just go on a tangent here. In terms of silence, right? Are you the type of person when you go into the shower, you need to have music on? Oh, actually, no. That one, I don't. I don't. Okay, okay. Because like the, the, the sound of the shower is enough and it's 
probably let's be real i'm probably singing in my head anyway <laughs> so all, all right so in in that case it's basically you don't like the sound of an a quiet hotel room yes correct okay. Like it's it's the lack of sound that creeps me out. Mm-hmm. So a shower is fine because you have the sound of running water. Mm-hmm. So um, I especially hate invigilating exams, right? Um, in classrooms. So like the big exams, like IGCSE, in the hall, mm. in the halls, it's fine because it's a lot of people. There's like the sound of the aircon. Mm. Um, there's all there's a ton of sounds of like you know flipping paper. There are more other invigilators around, but when you are in a classroom mm. and it's just the class there and there <laughs> is no sound, especially when on a regular basis, these children are like ridiculously loud, chaotic, tiny monsters, some not so tiny. So mm. when it's suddenly silent, it's really creepy and I hate it. That is so interesting because I like the silence that comes with an empty, uh, a quiet hotel room. And mm. I always find myself struggling when there's a lot of noise. And sometimes I find that it, I'm, I'm not sure how to describe it, but it kind of agitates me a little bit. Like I get very on edge if I hear some kind of sound. So I don't like the Well, I mean, if it's a sound uh, suddenly coming out after the silence, yeah, I'd be hella creeped out. Okay, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well <laughs> okay on that still tangent note have you taken um a what's that thing like the quiz on like your learning style i i feel like i have like on I... whether whether you're like a kinesthetic visual or like auditory person yes but that was many many years ago so i think if i remember I, i'm the type of person who needs to be able to do so kinesthetic yeah, yeah I would that's kinesthetic. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. When, I remember when I took that test, I was totally uh, expecting for it to come out as auditory. Okay. <laughs> but that was like the lowest. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I feel like from the actual auditory people that I know um, at work and stuff, a lot of them cannot actually deal with a lot of noise. Mm. It's too stimulating for them, mm. I think. But I feel like in my case... I just sit in the noise and then I pinpoint what I want to hear. Mm, okay, selective hearing at its best. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can't I can't listen and learn at the same time because sometimes I feel like I am listening, but I cannot visualize what you're trying to say. Yeah. So I need you to show me. Yeah, how I, to g- do I mean it. I, I guess it depends on what is what the thing is, of course. Yeah, I think so. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of things I do actually need that kind of like show me how to do with yeah. like comes to repairs, cooking. Oh yeah, of course. Like, like if somebody was trying to teach me how to repair something and I didn't <laughs> see it, there is no way in hell I would understand. Yeah, but I can't really think of something that you can learn through just listening, you mm. know? I, mean, I don't know. Listen to enough things, enough times, it will somehow get stuck in your brain. I guess, I mean, then if that's the case, right, it's really a matter of languages then. True. Because if not, if anything, by now I would have learned how to speak Mandarin. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I mean, that's true. But then again, you do say that you selective, you're very selective about your hear, <laughs> what you hear. For, uh, for some un, absolutely unknown reason, I just cannot, cannot, cannot pick up Mandarin or Cantonese, nor can I tell the difference between them. It's, hmm, I find this very difficult. To... Okay, this is, a, I mean, okay, that, this is a topic for like another day because this is insane. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So maybe yeah. we'll come back to this on another day. Sure, sure. We'll, we'll talk about that another day. For my our, inability our... <laughs> to speak what is allegedly my mother tongue. <laughs> what have you been lis- listening to recently? Okay, recently, well, <laughs> I would be listening to Hello Internet, except that, you know, I cannot. Um, so the most recent podcast that I got into, and I guess what the podcast that kind of shoved me into poking you about starting this one, <laughs> because I suddenly, you know, it just gave me that burst of inspiration or whatever the heck you want to call it, mm. um, is Mayim Bialik's podcast. 
Oh, so, okay. yeah, Maya Bialik, who played Amy Farrah Fowler on The Big Bang Theory, a show that I did not watch, but for some reason, I am currently, like, obsessed with mainly her, because she is fascinating. So she has a podcast with her, well, partner, uh, where, because, okay, so do you know who she is? Did you watch Big Bang? I highly doubt you watch Big Bang. <laughs> I do not watch okay, The great. Big Bang Theory. Okay, do you know who she is? I also do not know who she okay, is. Okay, so um, she was actually a child actress who right. left the industry to go and study neuroscience. Wow. So she actually has a PhD in neuroscience. Okay. And then she went back into acting and got, her, and got the role on Big Bang Theory where she played a neuroscientist. <laughs> this is very strange. I feel like I've he- I've heard of this person before. Where mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I because there was this whole thing on Twitter, right? Where some th- there there's an actress on Big Bang Theory who mm-hmm. is you know like a neuroscientist and yeah. whatnot, and that you have these dude bros who are just talking down to her on the internet on Twitter, mm-hmm. and she goes, look. I understand this topic a lot better than you do. I have a PhD. I don't need to prove myself to yep. you, a stranger on the internet. But I re- remember something like that happening at one point in time. So wait, wait, when you're describing her, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, hmm, this person sounds really familiar. Um, okay, so I mean, uh, that probably d- did happen. Let's be real, because it's the internet. <sighs> It is. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, so she has a PhD in your side. So her podcast with her partner uh, is, I mean, I guess mostly about mental health, but she looks at it from that, like, neuroscience perspective. Mm. And so she, I mean, she talks to, well, because she's a celebrity, she talks to other celebrities um, Mm. about, you know, their mental health and their brain brain things yep. um but she also speaks to like actual uh you know doctors and other people in the actual mental health industry side of things as well yeah okay yeah so uh i listen to that i listen to simply pod logical <laughs> which mm. is um a podcast that uh, the YouTuber Simply Neological, Kristen R- Christine Rotenberg, has with her boyfriend, uh, where they also talk about, well, whatever they talk about. <laughs> uh, I, I listen to the podcast that the Try Guys have, okay, which is the Tripod, and then also the podcast that the Try Wives have. Wow. So, yeah, their partners, um, which is You Can Sit With Us. I sometimes like that one more than the tripod. And I I was listening to No Dumb Questions, which was another two dudes talking. I have a lot of like just people talking about random things kind of podcasts I listen to. So which is why I feel like the Night Vale one really is a shift. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was listening to NDQ, and then I stopped, and then I started again. So, I guess there's that. So, yeah, th- those are the ones that I currently listen to, anyway. Ooh. What about you? I feel like we listen to very different things. Because... Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Obviously, I'm like, yeah. I just, I just like listening to people talk. I just need the sound, man. Yeah, like, so the podcast that I listen, I, I've been listening to uh, recently, I would say maybe in the past half year, like, let's just mm-hmm. go with that. Uh, I listened to one podcast uh, called Dear Therapist. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, it's hosted by Guy Winch uh, and Laurie, Laurie Gottlieb. So basically, the, they're these two psychologists who talk to real people about relationships, uh maybe issues and just basically mental health related Mm -hmm. sorts of things. Uh, So that's one. And I think what's very interesting is they have these people come on call with Mm -hmm. them and they kind of guide them through their whole experience. And then also they do a follow-up of sorts. So it's kind of like you're sitting in on a therapy session Mm -hmm. in some ways. So that's one. Uh, I also uh, have been following this, um, podcast called lore olympod okay. so 
Uh, so, I mean, I don't know if you've read uh, this web tune called Lore Olympus. Uh, basically, Greek gods, uh, Persephone, oh, okay. uh, meets Hades, and whatnot, whatnot. Mm-hmm. You, and <laughs> so this is actually a follow by episode kind of podcast where they oh, just kind of dissect okay. everything. Okay, okay, okay. As yeah. in by the people who made the web tune or like the kind of thing that we wanted to do? The kind of thing that we wanted to do. Okay. Yeah, so, because Laura Olympus is a comic at the uh, and it's ongoing, right? So mm-hmm. every Sunday it updates and everything. This is not sponsored. <laughs> I, I just need to put it out. I just really love comics. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's really funny because they just go through each episode panel by panel and they, and it's this whole dissection of you know what they think about it and sometimes you know they thirst over a character yeah. maybe <laughs> it's very interesting but i guess like most of the podcasts that i listen to tend to be very much uh inward centric where you're talking a lot about how do i know myself better how do i understand what i am doing better and my emotions and such and such i guess i mean i guess the closest thing that i listen to that is something like that would be my ins podcast Mm-mm-mm. yeah i mean like if you're, talking, if you're talking like looking inwards i used to listen to another podcast that cgp gray has uh mm. which is still ongoing which is called cortex where they basically just talk about like systems and how to do things <laughs> and, like the systems of their life and like, wow yeah and then it just kind of got a bit too much so I'm like, okay, never mind. I'm gonna stop this. Mm-mm-mm. The the other one that you said, like the the what's it, the lore Olympod one, which yeah. is like a follow along. Actually, yeah. uh, when you first said that, I was thinking, uh, there was actually another. There was a podcast that was a follow along of a short YouTube web series. Okay. Called the Wayward Guide for the Untrained Eye. This sounds uh, very familiar, but I it don't think I came I out. Actually, when did it come out? Uh, last year or 2020? I can't remember. Mm. Basically, it was made by the same people who, or at least a bunch of the people who made the uh, Very Potter musical series and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, you know who is in Wayward Guide? Uh, some of the Lizzie Bennett people. Oh, very interesting. Yes. Okay, now that I, like, it just, it just occurred to me. Yeah, Mary-Kate Wiles is in it. Um, who else is in it? Uh, is the guy who played Ricky? No. Um, Emma from Emma Approved, Joanna Sotomora, she's in it as well. Okay. Yeah, uh, so there's a bunch of people that you, you are aware of who are in it, which also includes Clayton Snyder, aka Ethan Craft from Lizzie Wire. He's in it. <laughs> that is so long ago. Wow. Yes. Okay, oh so, yeah, so, so, so it was a short YouTube series with like an accompanying podcast. Okay. So it was, I can't remember how many episodes, like 10 episodes only. So like the pod, the podcast recaps like the characters of the show mm. recap in the podcast mm-hmm. the stuff that happened. Uh, that is a very interesting concept. Yeah. So, it is. Yeah, yeah. So that one was fun. So that's over. So obviously I'm mm. not following anymore because it's done. Uh, there was another one that also happened in the height of pandemic times um, <laughs> by the Broadway Podcast Network, I guess, which is another, which was another fictional short like podcast series called As the Curtain Rises, where I think the characters like are trying to write a new musical. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. So that one was fun. So th- those two, I think, are like short follow along type thingies. Um, there was another thing that I don't even know how I found, which was called the Babys- Baby. Did you ever read the Babysitter's Club? No. Have you heard of it? Yes. Like but I don't know much of it. At this point, right, my, our listeners are going to just think, I know. Wow. How I'm, are these people friends? <laughs> how are we friends? How, how on earth do we get on? There's nothing, in, there doesn't seem to be this whole bridge, you know. Where is the bridge? It's a rainbow. And that's it. 
the bridge is the reason for our podcast name, which I think we probably should get into because my cousins asked me about it the other day. But before that, um, all right, the Babysitters Club is like a really old series of books. Like they came out, I think, like before we were in primary school. They're really old about well, a babysitters club. So. <laughs> It was just this one podcast where there was just these two guys literally mm. recapping and talking through every single book. Wow. Two dudes talking about a book series meant for children, mainly girls, which was interesting to listen to. <laughs> this reminds me of um, I, in you, on YouTube um, where someone did this uh, read along for Twilight mm-hmm. and it was the funniest thing I've ever heard because he hated the book so much but he went through the entire book because he was he was going through it by sheer will so every Mm -hmm. I think every episode of that read along was about maybe a few chapters Mm -hmm. and he's just he gets so upset and at one point he got so angry with a scene I can't remember what the scene is anymore but it was so ridiculous until he had to tear the pages and he's like yeah you know these should not exist okay (laughs) And, and at the end of it, right, he goes like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to finish this because I started and I'm going to finish what I started. That's it. Yep. He, I mean, he but, got it, He got that far. He got that far. But I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember who, who it is anymore. But I just remember something like, like this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, are there any more that like you used to listen to? Mm, not so much. Uh, you Because a lot of the things that I listen to are kind of very current because pre- mm-hmm. last time it was very much just singular episodes of people I knew of who mm-hmm. were invited on, on the podcast but yeah. then now it's just more of like I guess I listen to Brene Brown once in a while because uh, mm-hmm. oh, who knew that she had a podcast and in, th- and in this case like she deep dives into some of the things that she talks about besides just vulnerability how she uh works with people in her life to kind of face things head on and such that I feel like sometimes it's a bit heavy and I have to actually pay attention to her mm-hmm. <laughs> when when I'm listening to it so I don't listen to her podcast as often but the ones that I do listen to the most are Laura Limpot and this Jujutsu Kaisen podcast which is basically also a recap of sorts where the <laughs> cast of the of Jujutsu Kaisen this anime uh they talk about each episode after a week after the the episodes end and I'm like oh, I really like this because it's funny and you get to hear their point of view on what they think their characters are like and mm-hmm. just uh the whole mood of it is very interesting okay so I guess now we can address the the name of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The Point No Points podcast or the Point No Points cast. I don't know if we should just like change it to that or just leave it. Um, but yes, how are we even friends? You may be wondering if you do not actually know us in person, in real life. Um, the name is entirely from the literature works that we had to study while we were in A levels which is when we met <laughs> that we did yes <laughs> yes so um we have point no points with the point well i get okay i guess the easier the, the easier part to address first would be the points part which is uh, so Poins is a character from the Shakespeare play Henry the Fourth Part One, which we had to do, and yeah. the reason for why it is in the name was because uh, where the point no, where I guess where the more expected, I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, but I guess the more expected phrase would be point no point. That is the title of an, would it be called an anthology or just a collection? I don't know. I would say it's a collection of poems. I mean, yeah. And it was also the title of a poem. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. 
it was the title of a poem in the collection of poems by the Indian poet Sujata Bhatt. <laughs> and for whatever reason, we decided that smushing these two things together would be a good idea. Yeah, I mean, at the time, there were, there were four of us back in school where we yes. thought about this and somehow we thought it would be a very nice uh, prelude to, I guess, a group of sorts, a group <laughs> name. Yeah. Whatever I don't know what you want to call it, but yes, that, the, the it thing is what that it we, is. I guess the thing that we did talk about in the previous episode, our delusions of grandeur. I mean, there there are still sort of four of us because we may have two people coming on semi regularly. I don't know. Yeah, that we don't. Um, so we we'll, we'll see. I mean, like life has made things very easy for remote recording. Uh, yes. So very true. I, very true. <laughs> I don't see a problem with that. Have yes, I? I think the main problem is just scheduling. Because of course, now we're, I guess we are getting into the back end of stuff. Are we letting, and we're just letting our listeners listen to us talk about this. Uh, because we don't have to record only when we want to put out an episode. Yep. We can record a bunch in advance and I will just, you know, very slowly get through them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, actually, I feel like we can always think of it as a phone call. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I essentially think, yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, it doesn't have to be so pre-prepared of sorts. True. Right? I mean, after all, it is, our title is technically a play on point, no point. So what is the point? Is there a point? Does there have to be a point? Not mm-hmm. really. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... On one hand, what's the point? But at the same time, when you talk about points, there's that (laughs) whole sense of you don't make a point. That's true. Just get through life. That is very true. Plus, he kind of just disappears at the end. Yeah. Kind of lame. But he he made it into our name, so... (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Somehow, I feel like um, our literature lecturer should be very, very proud of us for remembering these things. Um you know, 11 years later. (laughs) (laughs) That is true. It's been a very long time. It has been a very long time. Yeah. I can't imagine any other name, actually, at this point. Yeah, it's it's just been the thing for, like, so long. Yeah. So, yes. (laughs) All right, we're done. We're done. Yeah, okay. Well... (laughs) Okay, uh, before we end, though, I just want to mm-hmm. say, we have a website. Okay, mm-hmm. no, we don't have a website. We have a Tumblr. We have a Tumblr because we're too poor and or cheap to pay for an actual domain name. <laughs> we do have a website? I did not know that. Yeah, you don't know that. I'm telling you that now. Oh, okay. it, it's literally just point no points dot tumblr dot okay. com. And also, like, I don't actually know how much we'll post on it because... We're hosting this podcast on Anchor anyway, so it's not like we actually need an actual website to host the audio files, but I figured that, you know, we'll use the Tumblr to, like, I don't know, post pictures of random things we talk about or, like, you know, actually post links to things we talk about. Who knows? Any further thoughts? Whatever. Okay. Interesting. We'll see if it actually gets used. I don't know, but it's there. Well, I mean, like, I, I, I'm thinking it's a bit interesting just because I feel that a lot of this could be mirrored on the existing Instagram you created. So, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's, prob- it's probably just going to be cross-posted everywhere. Let's be <laughs> real. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, today is about podcasts, and here we are with our second episode. Yes. Which you can find. I don't know where you're listening to us on, but wherever you are, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Overcast, our YouTube channel. (laughs) I tried getting the podcast up on Google Podcasts, but it's being a pain. And I don't know why, because the RSS feed works like basically everywhere else. So Mm. I'm going to need to check that again. Hmm. Interesting. We're actually everywhere. So like us, subscribe, follow, I don't know, do the thing that you do. Yes, thank you for your time. Please tell all your friends. Leave us a review. (laughs) Thanks for listening, guys. (laughs) 